Jerome K. Jerome. Three men in a boat to say nothing of the dog. There were four of us, George and William Samuel Harris and myself and Montmorency. We were sitting in my room smoking and talking about how bad we were, but from a medical point of view, I mean, of course. We were all feeling seedy and we were getting quite nervous about it. Harry said he felt such extraordinary fits of giddiness come over him at times that he hardly knew what he was doing. And then George said that he had fits of giddiness too and hardly knew what he was doing. With me, it was my liver that was out of order. I knew it was my liver that was out of order because I had just been reading a patent liver pill circular in which were detailed the various symptoms by which a man could tell when his liver was out of order. I had them all. It is a most extraordinary thing, but I never read a patent medicine advertisement without being impelled to the conclusion that I am suffering from the particular disease therein dealt with and its most virulent form. The diagnosis seems in every case to correspond exactly with all the sensations that I have ever felt. I remember going to the British Museum one day to read of the treatment for some slight ailment to which I had a touch, a fever, I fancy it was. I got down the book and read all I came to read, and then, in an unthinking moment, I idly turned the leaves and began to indolently study diseases, generally. I forget which was the first distemp I plunged into, some feeble, devastating scourge, I know, and before I had glanced half down the list of premonitory symptoms, it was borne in upon me that I had fairly got it. I sat for a while frozen with horror, and then, in the listlessness of despair, I again turned over the pages. I came to typhoid fever read the symptoms, discovered that I had typhoid fever, must have had it for months without knowing it, wondered who tells I had got, turned up St. Vitus's dance, found, as I expected, that I had that too, began to get interested in my case and determined to sift it to the bottom, and so started alphabetically, read up ague and learned that I was sickening for it, that the acute stage would commence in about another fortnight. Bright's disease. I was relieved to find I had only in a modified form, and so far as that was concerned, I might live for years. Cholera I had with severe complications, and euthyria I seemed to have been born with. I plodded conscientiously through the twenty-six letters, and the only malady I could conclude I had not got was housemaid's knee. I felt rather hurt about this at first. It seemed somehow to be a sort of slight. Why hadn't I got housemaid's knee? Why this invidious reservation? After a while, however, less grasping feelings prevailed. I reflected that I had every other known malady in the pharmacology, and I grew less selfish and determined to do without housemaid's knee. Gout, in its most malignant stage, it would appear, had seized me without my being aware of it. And zymosis, I had evidently been suffering with from boyhood. There were no more diseases after zymosis, so I concluded there was nothing else the matter with me.